25 years of his life working alongside the great man on a crano plans of all sizes, he had to watch as the future of Russian winging ground effect came to a halt. That took place in front of our eyes. And of course, the blow to the morale of the workforce because of Alexeyev's sacking was colossal. Without his leadership, the drive to build Ekranoplans was gone, and Alexeyev's Ekranoplan department was virtually closed down. Today, Alexeyev builds small hydrofoils for the government. In the new market economy, the Central Design Bureau is cut to the bone. For the Ekranoplan, and Alexeyev's dream, the future has come to a standstill. Spasartl could have represented the link between the past and the future for Alexeyev's. If fitted out for passenger transport, it could carry 500 people at a fraction of the cost of air travel. No one else in the world has the experience to build this type of craft. Of course, I feel upset and frustrated, and not only myself, but all the Central Design Bureau and the factory employees. However, the funding schedule for this project is so slow that it takes a very long time. But while some are prepared to sit it out and wait for a change in climate, for one man, being unable to work on Ekrano plans was unbearable. He had to keep the flame of Alexia for life. So he left the bureau that had been his life for 25 years and started out on his own. Dmitry Sinitsyn, the man who took over from Alexeyev, left Nizhny Novgorod and the Bureau to set up his own company, Amphistar. In a hangar once used by Alexeyev for his early prototypes, Sinitsyn's new company is hard at work building ground effect vehicles. We buried Alexeyev with our own hands. We felt it was our destiny to inherit his work and we should do our duty to continue his cause. What that man needed to rest in peace was for some enthusiasts to continue his life's work. And we are those enthusiasts. The Amphistar is not on the same scale as Pesartl, but for Sinitsyn, it is just a start. With his knowledge and first-hand experience from the Caspian Sea Monster, all he needed was financial investment. And where it came from would have raised a few Communist Party eyebrows. The engineering may be 100% Russian, but the company's headquarters is in the heart of the United States. It is here that the Akrana plans are painted, upholstered and refinished to a high standard before being marketed under a more Western name. Chan Cho is the brains behind this setup, a businessman from Taiwan who was scouting for Russian technologies after the breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991. I can say the idea of ground of fact is very, very touching. I knew nothing, but I got affected. And now I am an enthusiast, too. The Soviet Union had a lot of good technologies, from space down to ocean. But since everything was falling apart, the scientists could not get funding. They were worried about their life, their future, how should they feed their family? So I said, well, we should save this person and save their know-how and or knowledges. And that's the background how we started this deal. Cho was operating with the help of his Russian partner, Vladimir Globienko. With a background in engineering and an intimate knowledge of the Soviet system, Globienko was able to guide Cho to highly secret areas of technology. Together, they discovered the design bureau that created the Caspian Sea Monster and traveled to Nizhny Novgorod to meet the designers. At that time when Russia was uh, opening up, 
a lot of technologies uh, seemed to be military applications mostly. So most of the new things were uh, classified or even kept secret until a certain time. And uh, getting access to those uh, technologies which could be commercialized was not that simple. Basically, with our project, we started, uh, we did manage to get to the right source, the Central Hydrophobe Bureau. And we got there at the right time when the Bureau was closing this project and the designers were practically dismissed. They had nothing to do. So we were at the right place at the right time and we got the right people to work on this. I personally reached my absolute limit. Every day I used to look forward to going to work, but in the last two or three years I was ashamed to go to work because I was, relative to the others, fairly well paid. I was ashamed to receive those wages. Finitsyn saw his opportunity to escape the Bureau and arranged a secret meeting in Moscow. The meeting was held in a small office at the base of a suburban tower block, but it was the meeting that was to decide the future of Russian wing-in ground effect. <clears throat> so, let's call it a historic meeting. It took place in Moscow in a small office. It was a small room about this size with a similar table. Well, not as nicely decorated. Some chairs around the table. That's all I remember now. This meeting determined the following five years of our existence. Up to this day, this was a very big event. What Sinitsin brought to the table was 30 years of top secret knowledge from Alexievs. What the Taiwanese brought was hard currency. Although Sinitsyn risked being seen as a traitor by his colleagues, only the deal cut in the Moscow tower block could keep Alexiev's dream alive. It may be that if he were alive today, he would say to us, guys, you're doing everything wrong. Chances are that's what he would have said. So he might lead us in a completely different direction. But the fact is that we didn't give up, and we are the only people in Russia who are still working on Ekranoplans. We just continue doing the work at which we are experts. And this is a great happiness. Zinitsyn has created his own design bureau in Nizhny Novgorod with other defectors from Alexievs. Together they work on what Zinitsyn believes to be the future of Ekranoplans, the MPE series of large-scale passenger craft. It is only when a craft reaches this size that the full economic advantages can be exploited and, as in the days of Alexia, they can cross the oceans. That is the intended future for Sinitsyn's company. In the meantime, the American publicity machine is busy preparing the Western world for this transport revolution. adventurer on the water and um, when I saw the craft and saw its application immediately it came to me extreme explorer no beach out of reach to us this is a new wheel this is a new means of transportation and we're on the cutting edge and we are the extreme team that's for sure We're fortunate enough to have the designers that were in the early 60s with the Caspian Sea Monster. The, uh, the, we have the designers, we have the um, skippers that skippered those crafts. Fortunate enough to have them here in the USA, which four years ago, you would have had to have been a spy to see what we're seeing today. I believe we've accomplished in a matter of a few months what our governments couldn't put together in a matter of 30 years. I believe that too.
In a series of high-speed demonstrations, the Russian team travels around the states with the extreme explorer. It's ironic that 30 years down the line, top-secret Soviet technology is for sale in the United States. What's even more ironic is that in this particular boat show, it's not being test-driven by the citizens of the sleepy town of Solomon Island, but by the people on the other side of the river, the Research and Development Department of the United States Naval Air Warfare Center. Our idea was to convert this military craft and make it something which is uh, more suitable for civil applications. Of course, uh, the American military, the US military are interested in this craft, but uh, our position now is that we are making a modification, just the one you see outside, and this is the model which we're offering for our, to our buyers. We are not knocking on their doors, but they are trying to reach us. The Cold War technology that turned up on a spy satellite photograph is now being scrutinized at first hand by the US Navy and explained by Russian scientists. For winging ground effect, it is a triumph of engineering over politics. Yes, good. Well, well, it's very impressive. Thank you. Good experience. The engineering has uh, real efficiencies that we have known for years. The Russians have tremendous uh, experience uh, in this area, and I think it's a wonderful world when we can share together. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, Admiral. That's excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Admiral. Thank you. We're expecting some orders for these boats in the nearest days. We really are. With Sinitsyn and his team, the future of winging ground effect seems secure. With plans for two or three hundred seaters within ten years designed by Alexiev himself, there is a sense that the Akrano plan has finally come of age and is flourishing free from the weight of communist bureaucracy. In this politically changed environment, we may soon be able to benefit from the astonishing technology that was once hidden away from the rest of the world. This is the first time I've seen this picture. At that time, we were sitting right here. Here is the craft in the dock, and this is where we are sitting. 